Hi, my name is Zoe Dufour. I'm a figurative sculptor and I'm here with St. Gaudens National Historical Park to talk about the many step process that a sculpture goes through from its beginning in clay to its finish in bronze. The very first step in making a sculpture is making an armature. An armature is what holds the clay in place and keeps it from collapsing, just like your skeleton holds you up and keeps your, your body from collapsing. This is an armature I've used for figure sculptures. So I build clay up around this shape. You can see it basically looks like a stick person, but once I put clay on, it becomes a more realistic looking human. But this metal framework, this is metal wire, keeps the clay in place. Otherwise, the clay wouldn't be strong enough to hold itself up on the legs of the figure and would slowly collapse over time. As the sculptor puts clay on the armature, they shape the clay with different tools and their hands to make the sculpture look the way they want. So these are a few examples of the tools I use when I'm sculpting that are pretty typical. Some are wooden with flat edges and used to move clay around or apply clay. Some are metal loops and these are called rakes and you'd use them just the way you'd use a rake meant for raking leaves. You drag them over the clay and it smooths the surface out. And rakes come in all different varieties and sizes so that you can pick the tool that suits the size of your sculpture. So for a small portrait like this, I would use a smaller tool versus this larger tool. Once the clay sculpture is finished, a mold must be made around the sculpture. A mold is basically a reverse copy of the clay sculpture. If I finish this clay sculpture, to make the mold, first I would need to coat this sculpture in a layer of silicone. Silicone is a soft, rubber-like material and is basically painted on the sculpture. This layer captures all the detail that exists on this sculpture. So if there's even a fingerprint on this sculpture left over by me, the silicone will pick that up and is just an exact reverse copy of this sculpture. So if you can see this, this would be the positive and this would be the negative. So all the features that exist on this portrait are transcribed in reverse onto this mold. Once the statue, or rather clay sculpture, is coated in rubber, it looks sort of just like a blue blob. There is another step to making a mold after applying the silicone, which is covering the silicone with a hard layer. Usually it's a shell made out of plaster or another gypsum-based material. And what this shell does is give that silicone layer a bed to lie in. So without the hard shell, the silicone is so floppy that you wouldn't be able to create another version of this piece. But the hard shell gives it structure and shape so that it remains looking like this face once you take the mold off of the clay sculpture. Most silicone rubber used in mold making comes in two liquid parts, the rubber and a catalyst. The catalyst is the chemical component that is mixed into the rubber and causes the liquid rubber to become a stable solid material. The catalyst is mixed into the silicone rubber right before the rubber is applied to a sculpture. Mold makers then have a limited amount of time to work with the liquid silicone until it becomes thicker and then completely sets as a solid. Here you see mold makers working on a life-size figure sculpture. All the walls of the mold are sections of the mold. The mold will come apart on those particular pieces and each piece will be turned into a bronze individually, then eventually welded back together 
to create the complete bronze sculpture. The mold is made in multiple parts so that it can be removed from the sculpture. The more complex the sculpture is, the more parts the mold will have. Once the sculpture is removed from the original clay, it is put back together. So now the complete mold is hollow and the cavity is what used to be the sculpture. At this stage, we would heat wax to a very high temperature until it was melted and then pour wax inside this mold and create a thin wax version of the clay original. So the wax would look just like this sculpture but made of wax and the wax would also be hollow. So the wax would only be about a quarter of an inch thick rather than solid. And the reason we wouldn't want the wax to be poured solid from this mold is that when casting in bronze, we don't want the sculpture to be solid. Once the silicone mold is complete and the original sculpture removed, a wax copy or pattern is made using the mold. Wax is heated to a liquid state and poured into the mold. The mold is rotated to coat the entire inside surface with wax. Wax is built up over several coats until it is about a quarter of an inch thick. Once cooled, the hollow wax copy is removed from the mold and any imperfections are fixed with heated metal tools. Solid wax rods, called sprues, are attached. These create the channels that direct molten bronze into the mold. The cup and the thick main channels are for the molten bronze to be poured into, and the thinner channels allow air trapped in the mold to escape. As the bronze is poured in, which prevents air bubbles from forming. The wax copy with sprues attached is dipped in a ceramic slurry. After the wax is dipped in ceramic slurry, it is coated with a layer of sand. Since the wax pattern is hollow, both the inside and the outside of the wax copy are coated with this mixture. Bronze pins are inserted into the wax prior to dipping it. This keeps the inside and outside mold pieces separated. Alternating layers of ceramic slurry and sand are applied to the wax until a thick shell has built up, strong enough to hold molten bronze. This is the mold for bronze. The ceramic mold is heated to strengthen it and to melt the wax out of the mold. The wax is lost, which is why this method of bronze casting is called the lost wax method. Molten bronze is poured into the empty space where the wax once was, and then allowed to cool. Once the bronze has cooled, the ceramic mold is broken away, revealing the bronze inside. At this stage, the bronze is called raw because it still needs to be finished and patinaed. We will learn more about that stage as we watch real life examples of the bronze casting process. Here you can see several pieces of a figure sculpture in wax, having the wax bruise attached and any corrections made with an electric hot tool that melts and reshapes the wax. Once the wax is ready, foundry workers will begin the bronze mold making process for each piece of the sculpture. The wax is placed alongside molds that have already begun being made. The wax sculpture piece is attached to a metal handle and dipped into a vat of ceramic slurry. This is the first step in making the bronze mold. Sand is then poured over the wax piece, which sticks to the ceramic slurry. Alternating layers of ceramic mix and sand are built up on each wax to form a thick shell, which is the bronze mold. Once the shell is completely dry, it is placed in a large kiln or oven that heats it to 1500 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit.
This strengthens the shell and the wax will melt out at this stage. The mold is then ready for bronze to be poured in. The bronze is melted in a crucible to a temperature of 2,250 degrees Fahrenheit. The ceramic shell is placed in a pouring area on top of a bed of sand with a ceramic cup facing up ready to receive the molten bronze. Foundry workers dressed in heat resistant safety gear carefully pour the molten metal into the ceramic molds. Once the ceramic mold and shell have cooled, the ceramic mold is broken apart and removed. The sprues are cut off the sculpture and the piece is sandblasted to remove any remaining shell. Each piece of the sculpture is then welded back together. You can see the weld lines since it changes the color of the bronze to an almost bluish hue. Once the welding is complete, the metal must be refinished and textured to match the surface of the rest of the sculpture. Here you see the finishing touches being done on a raw bronze figure that was welded together. Small detailed sculpture pieces are welded on at this stage. The weld marks on the main sculpture body are no longer visible and the surface of the bronze is consistent. The last step of the bronze sculpture process is applying the patina. The patina is what colors and enhances the existing sculpture. To apply the patina, the bronze sculpture is heated and chemical washes are applied, typically oxides and nitrates. There is a really wide range of patinas possible. Different effects can be made with different heat temperatures, chemical combinations, and chemical application methods or tools. Once the patina is complete, the sculpture is coated with wax or lacquer or a mixture of both to seal and protect it. It's pretty incredible the amount of work and skill that go into creating a bronze sculpture. It's a team effort and requires many hands. Every bronze sculpture you see at St. Gaudens National Historical Park has gone through this same process. Here we see the finished work we watched being created during this video. They are wonderful sculptures to include in our American sculpting tradition. I hope this gives you all a new understanding and appreciation for the art of sculpture. Thank you for watching.